Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Tips to Measure Color on Transparent Flexible Film. Presenting today is Keel Harder, a Product Manager at X-Ray. I'm Robert Grotanz, the Global Technical Marketing Manager, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Before I turn it over to Keel, I just need to cover a few um, simple things. Due to the number of people that are attending today's webinar, we will keep everyone muted. If you have any questions, please use the questions function on the GoToWebinar panel. And we will have some time at the end of this webinar to answer a couple of your questions. Finally, this webinar will be recorded and you'll receive a link so that you can review the webinar at your convenience. So with that, I'll turn it over to Keel to get things started. Wonderful, thank you so much, Robert. And good morning and good afternoon to everyone. So I'm really excited to walk through a presentation to give the most latest and greatest tips for measuring color on flexible film. So today's objective is wanting to discuss about why measuring on flexible film can be tricky. And I'll go to the ins and outs and actually discuss how instrument orientation, so if you have a spectrophotometer um, and depending on the orientation, how that can actually impact measurement results. Uh, with that said, with that in mind, um, we have developed sort of best practices to measure on transparent flexible films. And we also provide recommendation on which instruments can best achieve consistent results on flexible film. At X-Ray, we have developed an instrument specifically for this use case um, to reduce some of the interference effects that, that you can potentially see. So flexible packaging is everywhere. It's, it's only increasing in prevalence and uh, it's more than just to protect goods on the shelf. Uh, when done right, flexible film uh, design can capture attention and increase product sales. Uh, we've heard more and more again from uh, customers and brands looking to distinguish their products. And so, you know, part of that is, is how the substrate looks and how the color looks on that substrate. However, measuring color on film uh, substrates can actually be quite challenging. Uh, even for the most sophisticated converter, and we'll kind of dive into that uh, right now. So one of the things about flexible film is that inconsistent results can occur, and the data might not be repeatable when trying to measure color. And so the big question is, does your film exhibit this sort of interference? And if the orientation shifts when you're measuring, the results that you may get while measuring may vary based on the instrument position on the film. Uh, positioning the instrument actually uh, compared to the film's extrusion, extrusion direction can cause interference. And we've done several samples across all different sorts of substrates. And we can see delta uh, deviations up to and over uh, two and a half delta E. And so the picture actually on the right kind of shows how when that orientation changes um, and how that potential interference can come about. So now, now the question because you know, how does this, how to test this effect and, and how do I know if I may experience uh, this issue? And, and actually we've sort of developed a test where you can actually understand any sort of interference coming from uh, the substrate. So when measuring color on flexible film uh, with your spectrophotometer, ensure that the film is affixed to appropriate backing material. and then measure the reference and measure it at different angles. So align the target of your measurement device uh, to the area you want to measure and then take a measurement. That's all you have to do. And then you can save that as a reference um, so then that becomes what you're benchmarking against. You can then repeat the measurement uh, on the same location and or orientation several times to evaluate short-term repeatability. So just keep measuring you know, five to 10 times just to see and, and evaluate that short-term repeatability. Now, this is where you can potentially see the sort of uh, orientational effect um, coming from the substrate. So all you have to do is rotate the instrument by increments of 20 to 30 degrees, and then take one or two uh, additional measurements. So kind of rinse and repeat and measure that and do that several times just to see what sort of deviation you're getting. So then you're able to then record and check the results against the standard. So assess the color difference to the reference measurements. Usually if there's a difference, typically probably about 0.3 Delta E, um, the film exhibits this issue. So it can vary in degree. 
Um, however, if you're seeing about a 0.3 or greater deviation, the film exhibits this interference issue. Uh, this process can actually be repeated at various angles. For example, I mentioned 20 to 30 degrees, but you can kind of continue to rotate it uh, 45 uh, to 90 degrees uh, just to see how the delta E in variation is uh, being caused because of the uh, potential interference from the substrate. So one of the things that we, we recently did was we tested this effect on 16 samples from a supplier. So we're in working with one of our customers who deals with substrates across the board, uh, we were able to take all of these samples and actually do this exact test where we would take the instrument and measure it, uh, measure in a standard, and then measure the short-term repeatability, and then do the ro rotation to get the orientation effect. And, Many film samples uh, can be insensitive to the orientation of the instrument. However, several samples did exhibit a maximum variation greater than one delta E. And some samples uh, even showed variation when you were rotating the instrument by only uh, 12 degrees. And one of the things that we are actually noticing is that this was happening um, in the exact. And if you look at the uh, graph on the right, um, the orange is actually what uh, the exact may exhibit on certain uh, substrates. However, we have developed a, an instrument uh, very similar to, to the exact that I'll get into that does mitigate this effect and takes this variation almost down to zero. So one of the, for the best results, uh, just in more generally, uh, when measuring color on flexible film, make sure that the film is affixed to an appropriate backing material. So ideally use the same backing for the sample measurement as was used to create the target color standard. Um, also additionally, the adhesive heat lamination static or liquid layer to ensure that you achieve the consistent measurement data. And so what that means is just making sure that you do have uh, a consistent backing material, especially when you are measuring um, the same standard. And one of the things that uh, is also important is that the backing of the master digital target uh, should be the same during sample evaluation, as mentioned. So the, the target creation process uh, and sample assessment process also need to align. So for example, if a target was created from clear and laminated to white, it is ideal to, to simulate that same lamination for the sample measurement. Uh, and this is, it can be especially true for lighter, low pigment colors like pastels and neutral colors, given uh, the impact of the back. And then lastly, as I kind of mentioned and shown on the graph, uh, the, the XP is optimized for measuring on flexible film. And so we developed this solution back in 2016. Uh, and we really derived it because of what we were seeing from uh, the data. And these features around the exact XP do indeed reduce the sensitivity to the orientation issues that I described. So, uh, you know, if you were to take a, an exact on certain uh, flexible film substrates, you would see that deviation as shown in the graph. However, um, the exact XP will not see that, that deviation. However, the exciting thing about the exact XP is that is the same specs models as the exact. Um, and the data compatible with the regular exact on uh, printed materials. And actually we do have, if you do have an exact and you're primarily measuring on, on flexible films, we do have a conversion path in which you can send your instrument in and turn it into an exact XP. Uh, additionally, the, the exact XP does support uh, ISO standards. Um, additionally, it supports M0, M1, and M2 measurements, um, but it does exclude uh, the polarization of M3. And so this was a, a very quick 10-minute uh, briefing on, on flexible film and, and substrates, but we did want to just show you and bring you awareness to that issue where you can see interference based on certain substrates uh, depending on what you're measuring and so we recommend that you indeed measure the to test this all you have to do is measure the a standard uh, measure it several times um, and then rotate it see if you see the variation and just be cognizant that you may indeed see that that variation and that being said the the backing in which you do measure is extremely important um, but then also the instrument in which you use. So we do highly recommend the exact XP because it does reduce that variation um, when measuring on flexible film. 
So thank you so much for your, your time today. We did want to make this a, a quick 10 minutes. We know that your time is valuable, we, but we do want to open up for, for, for questions if you have any. Yeah, thank you, Keel. So if you have any questions, please feel free to submit those questions now. While I wait for additional questions to come in, I am going to pop up another polling question. If you are interested in talking to a salesperson or getting a demo, feel free to answer that. I see a few questions here asking about backing material. Do you have recommendations for a, an appropriate backing material and where people might be able to purchase backing material? Or how yeah, people sure. can purchase the backing yeah, so material? What we can do is we can actually, we have a, a list of, of backing materials that we can follow up on an email. Um, but as I mentioned, making sure that it is uh, consistent with um, the process and, and lamination. So that being said, uh, what we can do is make sure that we can follow up with a list of, of appropriate backing materials in which we recommend and then um, get that to to everyone uh, who, who attended. So so a great question. We'll, we'll definitely um, send a list of, of backing materials. I, I use both film and paper. Can I use the XP and both substrates and get consistent results? Yes, you, you, you most certainly can. Um, one of the things, uh, like I, I said in the, um, the presentation, you, you can actually support both, both print and uh, uh, flexible film. Um, so, so any sort of paper stock or, or paper substrate, um, you can also use the um, exact on flexible film. We just wanted to make uh, customers aware that there is indeed potential uh, a variation depending on, depending on what sort of substrate you are using for the flexible film. And so we wanted to make sure that uh, if you do um, make sure that the orientation is, is very similar uh, to keep the, uh, the color consistency. Otherwise, if you're not using M3 for your workflow, um, an exact XP will just work perfectly um, as well on um, the, uh, the paper substrates as well. And like I said, we do have a conversion path um, within our service centers uh, because we know that we has sold the exact um, in 2012 and then in 2016 we came out with the exact XP and so we do provide uh, customers with a conversion path to get to um, if they want to uh, convert their existing exact to the exact XP um, we, we definitely do have that capability. Great I'm seeing a lot of questions come in I'll take a few more can we update or upgrade an exact standard to the XP Yep, yep, most certainly, most certainly. You, you can upgrade the uh, exact standard to the exact XP. Like I said, I, it, it is just um, a, a, a RMA through, uh, through our service centers, and we do offer that, uh, and so we can definitely get in contact with you, or if you have any, uh, you wanna contact one of our, our representatives, we can definitely make sure that uh, um, you can get more information on that uh, conversion path. Kind of related to both of the previous questions, does that upgrade? change how it reads or makes the reading uh, measure any differently? Uh, it, it does not um, unless you're you're using M3 as I mentioned uh, the exact standard uh, has M0, M1, M2, and M3 uh, where the exact XP uh, does not have that that polarization of, of M3. That being said um, the, the measurements are, are um, consistent across the board and uh, you will be able to measure, uh, as I mentioned, paper substrates and, and flexible film, no issues. Uh, we do just see some sort of variation and we do actually have a great white paper that we can also send out. And so um, Robert, what I'll do is I'll get the white paper as well as the preferred backing materials. And then we can send that out um, as a follow-up email if that's appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Yeah, I actually got a few questions asking about that as well. And we will send out this recording tomorrow so we can include that with this recording. Um, I see there's a lot more questions. Uh, we are up against time since we do want to keep this as a shorter webinar. So I will export these out and um, send them over to Keel and we'll do our best to get you responses as soon as possible. So I just we will end here for today. Thanks everyone for joining and have a great rest of your day. Yeah, thanks a lot, Robert. And I definitely want to get everyone's questions. And so um, keep keep the questions coming and we'll go ahead and, and get a reply to you as soon as possible because we know this is an exciting topic and we want to make sure that everyone has the information to, to be successful in your workflow.
Perfect. Thanks, everyone.